Paranormal Skeptic Academy presents Profiles in the Paranormal. During a recent family vacation, I was near the historic Fort Fisher on the coast of North Carolina. Fort Fisher was a strategic stronghold protecting the port of Wilmington during the Civil War held by the Confederate States. As a fan of history, I took it upon myself to visit the site and learn about it. But imagine my shock when I found out there is a haunted history as well. This is what we're going to look at in this Profiles in the Paranormal, Fort Fisher. Before we get into what may be haunting Fort Fisher, let me give you a brief historical overview of the fort and the main battles fought there during the Civil War. Fort Fisher was strategically significant. It defended the port of Wilmington. Wilmington was used to supply the Confederate forces in the South. Cotton and tobacco was traded for munitions, clothing, and foodstuff. The Union instituted a blockade at the port of Wilmington, and British supply ships, who were trading with the Confederates, ran supplies around the blockades and were called blockade runners. In 1862, the fort was in a sorry state. With the fall of Norfolk, improvements were ordered by Colonel William Lamb. Fort Fisher was built using the soil of the surrounding beaches. Because of this, the fort was well suited for absorbing heavy ordnance. The fort took on a L shape, consisting of Shepherd's Battery and Mounds Battery. Where the two batteries intersected, the northeast bastion was erected at 30 feet high, the tallest point of the fort. The fort was built using Confederate soldiers, slaves, and Native Americans. After the improvements, Fort Fisher became the largest Confederate fort. The main fortification type used at Fort Fisher was a land defense. It extended over 1,800 feet with over 15 mounds. The defense held 25 guns sitting over 32 feet above sea level. The mounds were connected with an underground network of tunnels that were protected from incoming artillery rounds. These were known as bombproofs. The Union mounted its first attack against Fort Fisher on December 24, 1864. Union naval forces and the Expeditionary Corps of the Army of the James was led by Major General Benjamin Butler. Rear Admiral David Dixon Porter commanded the Union naval forces. Hearing of the Union troop movements, General Lee ordered Major General Robert Hoke's division to Fort Fisher, where he assumed command. The Union Navy started with a heavy bombardment, silencing Fort Fisher guns with several exploding. The Union infantry landed for the beach assault, but was cut off by the arrival of Hoke's troops. The Union attack stalled, and Major General Butler withdrew his 1,000 troops on December 27th. Union General Grant relieved Butler of his duties for failure to follow orders because General Grant ordered a siege of Fort Fisher, but Butler withdrew his troops. The second attack came on January 12, 1865, and was led by Major General Alfred Terry, and Admiral Porter led the naval assault once again. Porter's 56 ships slammed Fort Fisher continuously. On January 13th, Terry's force of 8,000 soldiers commanded by General Alderbert Ames landed north of Fort Fisher. Naval bombardment continued night and day through January 15th. On the 15th, a second force of 1,600 sailors and 400 Marines landed on the northeast side of the fort. At 3 p.m. on the 15th, Ames's infantry attacked the northern land face. The sailors and Marines attacked the northeastern bastion. That attack on the bastion was repelled, but drew the attention away from the northern Ames attack. Ames's infantry entered Fort Fisher through Shepard's battery. The battle lasted six hours, and during the attack, Confederate General William Whiting was injured. Having surrendered, he was imprisoned and later died from his wounds on March 10, 1865. With the fort in Union hands, one of the main trade routes for the Confederates was cut off, thus helping seal the fate of the treasonous Confederate cause. Between the two engagements, Confederate forces suffered approximately 2,289 casualties and Union forces suffered 1,548 casualties.
a fascinating history of the fort that sits on the coast of North Carolina. The multiple and violent deaths suffered during the two battles would leave some to believe that there were spirits left behind. Could there be leftover spirits of dead Confederate and Union soldiers? Have people had encounters over the years? What evidence is there to support these experiences? Let's find out. At Fort Fisher, there are two ghostly apparitions that seem to appear on a regular basis. The first is the ghost of General Whiting. He was the commanding officer of Fort Fisher and was wounded in the final attack by Union soldiers. He later died from his wounds several months later. It is said that General Whiting still stands guard at Fort Fisher, overlooking the harbor atop the parapet at dusk. The second ghostly apparition is called the Sentinel. He is called the Watcher in the Woods. Some think this is a Confederate soldier standing in the woods on watch. The Sentinel was first seen in the early 20th century where hunters would report seeing the ghostly figure. Typically seen at dawn or during dusk, is this a Confederate soldier standing guard or is a General Whiting eternally patrolling the grounds of Fort Fisher? There have been other reports from staff and visitors of ghostly encounters. Some staff have said doors in the visitor center have flung open on their own. Former site manager and Civil War reenactor John Good had a run-in with a phantom horse. Late one night, he was in the woods facing what remained of the land face of the fort when he heard the neighing of a horse. Thinking it was a fellow reenactor, he searched the woods but never found the source of the name. Recently, although there is no date of when the investigation took place, seven paranormal research out of Carthage, North Carolina conducted a paranormal investigation of the fort. They captured several photos of these alleged apparitions. The first evidence they examined was a photograph taken right after the fall of Fort Fisher by Civil War photographer Timothy O'Sullivan. They outlined what could be the figure of a man standing on top of the parapet. Or was it a spirit? The second photo is of the alleged ghostly sentinel leaning against a tree. Could this be evidence of the sentinel and further evidence of the paranormal at Fort Fisher? The third photograph is of an orb outside the bombproof entrance. Seven Paranormal Research claims this orb corresponded with the temperature change and a magnetic fluctuation. Is this proof of a departed Confederate soldier still standing guard? The fourth photograph is what appears to be an outline of a figure standing inside the entrance of the bombproof. It appears to be a head, arm, and a hand. Is this yet more proof that something remains of the numerous soldiers that lost their lives defending and attacking Fort Fisher? Let's examine the evidence and take a closer look at each photo. Before we start, I did visit the fort during the day, but I didn't have any cool ghost hunting tools like you see on TV. I just had my camera and my senses. Also, my reason and logic. Please don't comment and say that I need to do a real investigation. My investigation is just as valid as those ghost hunters. Even more so, I think. So let's dig a little deeper into the claims we just heard. We have two alleged paranormal happenings at Fort Fisher involving General Whiting and a generic soldier. Let's take a closer look at the pictures that are used as evidence to support these claims. First the one by Civil War photographer Timothy O'Sullivan. It was taken days after the fall of Fort Fisher, so it cannot be General Whiting, who died in March of that year. This battle was fought in January. He was still alive when the picture was taken. We also must rely on mid to late 19th century photography to provide us a clear image. To me, this is clearly a photo of a living soldier at the time standing atop the parapet taken with poor 19th century technology. The second image is said to be the sentinel leaning against a tree. Granting this is the sentinel, and granting that ghosts behave like living humans do, this sentinel looks to be several feet off the ground. The tree it is said to be leaning against is in the foreground, and using the trees in the background as reference, this sentinel is chilling several feet off the ground. Sure, it's a ghost. They can float if they choose to. Looking at the image, the lighting, and the trees in the background, this is just shadows, lights, and pareidolia. No ghost here. I was physically at this location and took several photographs and videos of this bombproof entrance. I'm tall, six foot three. 
and that entrance is small. I would have to hunch way over and duck my head way down to be able to walk into it. Even someone like Lou would have to duck, and he's short. The alleged picture we see of the person is zoomed way in, is in the shadow, and the photo was taken with a flash. Let's say this is a ghost. It would have to be like three feet tall. Unless the Confederates had a battalion of little people, this is just shadows, lighting, bad photography, and pareidolia. Fort Fisher, a relic of the South's treasonous past, fallen at the hands of Union forces. With nature reclaiming the land, we can only hope to steal a glance at the past and see what life was like defending this once Confederate stronghold. Built with a combination of slave labor and Confederate mound power, Fort Fisher now stands as a testament to the bravery of the Union soldiers that overran the treasonous Confederate forces, hastening the end to the Southern Rebellion. Many men lost their lives attacking and defending Fort Fisher. I'm sure they died violent and painful deaths, but a violent and painful death a ghost does not make. There is no evidence that Fort Fisher is haunted by ghosts except for the ghost of our past and the lessons we can learn from them. Thank you for listening to this episode of Profiles in the Paranormal. If you enjoy the work I do, sign up to be a member at patreon.com slash PSA. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash P Skeptic Academy and like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Paranormal Skeptic Academy. Catch up on all past episodes at paranormalskepticacademy.com. Skeptic Academy.com.